Welcome to the Profitable Cleaner Podcast. Join your hosts, James Harper and Angel Sandoval, bringing you the experts, discussions, and knowledge you want. We talk about sales, technology, marketing, operations, strategy, leadership, mindset, health, God, and so much more. Now, are you ready to profit? All right. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Profitable Cleaner Podcast. I'm super excited. Special episode because we're highlighting our award winners from the Cleaning Profits 2.0, the statement event that we just had, geez, a month and a half ago now or a month ago. And one of those special award winners is joining us here today, Carolina Alvarez, the president of JNS Building Maintenance. Carolina, how are you doing today? Great. Thank you. Thank you for having me, James. Yeah, absolutely. So we were just talking right before I hit record here that I'm like, Carolina, like you are a force in the industry. I believe like you're a true powerhouse leader. And yet I don't think people really know like who Carolina is, who JNS is for people that don't know who you are and they should give us the one minute minute introduction of Carolina and JNS. All right, so 30 seconds, 30 seconds, here we go. (laughs) So um, I was born in Argentina. We moved here when I was around 12 years old. Um, I got in the industry by accident around my, uh, when I turned about 23 years old. And so I've been doing this for quite a while now. And I started JNS Building Maintenance in 2017. Uh, because the companies that I was working at at the time were, I had to travel a lot and I wanted to be home with the kids at the time. And it was just a different time in my life. So um, basically the other companies that I worked for were national janitorial companies. And like I said, we were like in 50 states and I was on the road a lot. Totally, totally. So that kind of forced you into doing your own thing. I want to you say 2017, like if you think about it and think about the growth you guys have had since 2017, that's actually like not that long ago. So for those listening from 2017 to now, 2023, just give us that snapshot of like what's played into your guys' success in the small window Mm -hmm. of time. Cause you, one, you guys have a hell of a team. Like every time I've ever interacted with anyone on your team outside of you, you guys all had like a presence and a statement about yourself. And then I know that I, I know a little bit about the growth that you guys have had in a short amount of time. Like what's played into that success, not just from a client perspective, but also a team perspective. So, yeah, we've pretty much we're six times bigger. You know, we're 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 big. We're in, we're based out of California. We are now uh, in 11 states. And I think the growth, I mean, it it was natural growth, I have to say, but uh, it comes with the experience that we've had. Again, you know, I come with a national background, my team, I was able to pick and choose my team. Uh, And yeah, that comes from working in in the industry for so many years. So I keep in touch with everybody. I still talk to people that I met 20 years ago. In fact, I hired a lot of them, you know. And the good thing is that even though in a way we are competition, um, we, I mean, I get texts at least once a week saying, hey, this is so-and-so. Do you remember me? Do you happen to know anyone in Arkansas? And I'm like, yeah, let me check it out. Let me see what I can dig, you know, from years ago. (laughs) And a lot of them are still in business, which is great. And or they're still in the industry or willing to get back into the industry. And I think, like I mentioned, making the team, uh, yeah, I, I love my team. I love working with them. We are pretty close. Uh, I think we kind of grew up together. You know, we mm. were in our early 20s when we started and some of, the, some of us didn't have kids, then we had kids. And so a lot of that came from, again, growing up together. So even though we are only, you know, we're gonna be six years old, um, but we've known each other for many, many years. I think that's a good way to put it. Like, and I do think there's some magic to growing up in business and in life with the people you work with. I going through like those monumental life milestones while also being in business together, like just brings a 
different type of closeness because like you're, you have a different Absolutely. investment in their family yes, and, and what they want out of life. And then you can kind of craft business and put them in positions to achieve that. So, and that actually is a good transition because you won a really special award that we gave out. We gave out three awards at our event and your award was the giver. And we wanted to highlight and acknowledge people that give back to their team, to obviously their communities, and just have a servant type of attitude and, and value with their company. Because we always talk about revenue and growth and profits and business. And that's everything because that's what keeps us in business. But then it's the impact you do with your growth. And you guys by and large, just like blew everyone else else out of the water. So I guess two questions for you, Carolina. One, where does that servant mentality come from? And how have you transitioned that like within your company? And then you've put it back into your team and community and just maybe highlight some of those causes that you're involved in yeah. inside or outside in the community. So I think personally, um, several people in our team kind of do a little bit of volunteering on on their on the side right whether it's through church or through different organizations that they they're close to their heart but then i feel like you know we were barely 2 years old when covid started and it was a lot of you know helping each other out as a community as employees and then business to business it was very soul searching i would say and um, when we when COVID started and everything just shut down and everybody was struggling, we were struggling. We didn't know how we we're going to meet payroll at some point. But then within a year, I feel that um, we were able to be very successful in the first year, year and a half. And I remember thinking we made it and we have to find a way to be able to give back. Right. Uh, and that was a very, I mean, it, it was a very difficult time for a lot of people. So it was sad to see how many small businesses closed that were not able to open their doors again. Uh, some of our clients that happened to some of our clients, which was, you know, really sad again. And it broke apart families and communities. So again, I think that's when it started. And the way that we started that was because there was a need for cleaning chemicals and toilet paper, right? Everybody was looking That's for right. disinfection items and and cleaning and you know, that was like a huge thing. And so we had everybody coming to us saying, "What do you guys have this? Can you get it for us?" And we're like, "Hey, it's really hard for us to get it, but we'll see what we can do." And we were already part of different associations. So one of them, uh we we helped Thomas House, which Thomas House is based out of Orange County in Garden Grove. And they help families in need. So what I started doing is I started dropping off every month uh, consumables like toilet paper uh, and then like mops and uh, anything that they would need. So then it was we were doing that for like about a year to a year and a half. And then we're like, OK, let's let's try to find something else like, hey, this really helped them. Like, let's, what else can we do? So out of that. Um, I want to say that we started putting our heads together. We did a little bit of volunteering here and there. We've had our toy drive now for three years. Uh, we do that during the, the last months of um, the year. And um, it's actually spreading, like how you said, James, like you see it. And I have clients now coming up to me saying, we want to be part of it. We want to be part of it. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I didn't know you guys wanted to. But OK, we'll let you know. So it's great. So a lot of people are getting way more involved in it. And that's what we wanted. We didn't want to do it just here. We wanted to put it out there so that it, it gets more people excited to do these things, right? And so out of that came um, what we call our charitable committee, which is employee-based here in the, in the company. And we meet once a month. And it's just like a committee. We have the president. We have the vice president. We have a secretary. We have a treasurer. And we come with ideas of like, hey, we would like to help this this month so it could be veterans it could be seniors it could be families it could be pets so we've done a lot of different ones this year 
Wow. I think that's awesome. So, so I want everyone listening right now to think like, okay, I got you guys listening, have a business and ask yourself, how are you utilizing your business to also serve others within your community? That's not like profit driven, right? And it shouldn't be publicity driven either. It should be servant servitude driven. What those committee meetings, I I'm, I'm, I want to ask you about this. What, like one, how do you guys finalize an idea on an organization or a cause to support? And then when you say you like go after and you support one, is that financially? Is that volunteer wise? Like from a labor standpoint, like talk to us about how you support those, uh, those organizations you guys decide on with the committee. All right. Hang with me for the next minute and a half. We got a quick break here in the Profitable Cleaner because we're officially official. It's like how I like to say it. Why? Because I get to take this break and introduce our sponsors. First sponsors is Usource. So go to usource.com. That's U-S-O-U-R-C-E.com. This is a business management platform for facility services companies. No more chaos, unnecessary admin work, or just having to consolidate information. This is about you, you not being the source of information anymore and having a platform that can give you accessibility, visibility, and control over your operation. So see more, do more, whether you're one employee or 3,000 employees, this is the platform for you. So check out our sponsor, usource.com. Our second sponsor, dayporter.com. They will help you with all your outbound, LinkedIn, email, call, and they're going to do it with a team from Latin America. So make sure that... Th- that you reach out to them, dayporter.com. They can help you hire your next superstar and give you the strategies to go book the walkthroughs that you're looking for. The th- third one is going to be Melgar Consulting. That's alexmelgar.com. If you're hovering around the $5 million range and you're in the facility services industry, want to hit those 20, want to keep bumping your head and really want to scale, he is going to be able to consult and help you have the right foundation, the right structure, and the right strategies, and the right advisory and consulting to get you past those 5 to $20 million. So go to alexmelgart.com. And last but not least, our fourth sponsor, cleaningprofits.com. That is our annual event for facility services, CEO, executive teams, leadership teams. Bring them out. This is all about transformation. It's all about training, it's all about community, and it's held once a year, this year, September 12th to the 14th. So thank you once again to all of our sponsors, and let's continue on to the show. Yeah, so um, it's actually really interesting. We, we allow anyone to bring ideas. So the, the vice president is the one that takes the ideas from anyone in the company, Or maybe they've seen something that they're like, hey, we should really check into this. Um, So then they bring those ideas to the table during our meeting. And then as a committee, we decide, you know what? We haven't done anything in this, you know, this area, which is, again, like maybe it could be veterans or it could be seniors. Um, So let's try this one out. Or it's based around like the month. Is it Veterans Day coming up? Is it, you know, is it Mother's Day coming up? We did something for Mother's Day. So things like that, we try to base it around whatever's going on that month. But so in the beginning, like, as I mentioned, we were just buying and dropping off. And we're like, no, we want to get more of our employees involved. Like we want them to be part of this. So now what we're doing is um, trying to find places where as a group, as a company, whoever's available, right? Because a lot of these things happen during the day when people are working. So we put it out there and then we see, okay, who's available that can go and do, like we did the um, OC food bank this this week, actually. And all they do is pack boxes of food. So we had like a, a team of maybe five or six this time. Uh, but in the past, we've had like 12 people there. So it really depends on how busy it is that and where we're going. And again, it's, it's the getting people involved and especially the people that are not in the office so that they can come and see, okay, we're not just about going to work and cleaning. We like to, as a team, as a group of people, see how we can give back. And it doesn't always necessarily need to be money. It could be your time. And so that's what we wanted to show that, hey, it's not always money. Like everyone can volunteer. You can volunteer your time. You can volunteer helping through emails or searching for someone uh, tutoring kids. So there's so many ways of 
being able to give back. And we always look for different communities. We don't go to just like where we where we're at. We try to spread that out. So I love it. I love it. What would you say that does from like a a team camaraderie standpoint? Have you noticed any shift like amongst like like when you do things as a team, whether that's like an event, a holiday party, maybe it's a training, you kind of see people come together. Do you see the same thing happen when they're out there in the field volunteering? Yeah, I mean, we have so much fun. It's kind of like a, a relaxing time, you know, outside of work, outside of meetings, outside of like, you know, being serious. It is like we really do have fun and the fun part of it, to be honest, is that we have some people that are so competitive. So <laughs> that starts with that you. comes out. Yes. <laughs> I'm super competitive when it comes down to this stuff, but it comes out when we're out. So like, I'll give you an example. We were planting trees a while back in, um, I want to say it was Linwood or Crenshaw in, uh, in, in LA County. And it was based on like groups of like three or four people. And we were trying to be like, who's going to do it fastest? You know, who's going to plant most trees? And so that was one. Then the other one was like, who can fill up the most boxes? So it's so fun because you really do forget about work for a couple of hours and concentrate on that. But the other aspect of that is that we do employee surveys. And that's always the number one thing that everyone says really? is their favorite thing about working here. So, wow. How cool is that? Yeah. And like, who, who would have thought that, right? People would probably think, what's the number one thing? Oh, we get annual raises or we have good benefit package. It's like, no, it's giving back. Cause when we get outside of ourselves, yeah. we feel better about ourselves. It's funny how that all works. Does this include like, okay, one, how do you choose your committee or how did you craft the committee? And then when you guys are out there volunteering, can it be anyone within the company? Is it like frontline workers or is it just like your office staff? Talk to us about like the logistical setup of the committee, how you chose that. And then like how you guys get people involved in the field. So when we first started the committee, so we're on year two now. So we've already went through a whole year of um, different positions. And instead of like, you know, your regular, oh, you get you keep the position for two years. We're like, no, let's, let's do it every year. Let's have people in different positions every year. So we're on year two of that. And when we started it, we just sent a mass email and we're like, Hey, this is what we want to do. Um, we're looking for positions, come to the meeting, meet us in the break room on this day at this time. <laughs> and so whoever showed up, literally we gave them all a position. So once the president, the vice president, secretary, treasurer, I think we have like a social media person. We just started putting directors, right? So you're in charge of emails. You're in charge of social media. You're in charge of finding us um, where we're going to go next. So that's how that was built. Um, and then as we proceeded through the months, we're like, okay, no, we really should probably put like a description so that when the next people come, they know what to do because it does sound overwhelming, but it's not. It's really not. It doesn't take that much time. And then. Um, as far as, as inviting, yeah, we invite everybody. Everyone is invited to join any of the events that we have coming up. And the way that we let our team know is the month prior on our monthly meeting, we say like, hey, this is what's coming up. Um, you know, look out for the emails. You can sign up and whoever's available just comes and shows up to do it with us. A lot of them you do have to sign up. Uh, and then, yeah, so we do have a lot of people from the field and the office that are there. Is it ever interesting to you, kind of the leader of the company, like, oh, interesting, that person showed up or, hey, the new the new lady showed up. Is it kind of interesting to see who actually sign, signs up and participates? I love when um, I get more people from the field showing up than the office. Uh, and I love that because I'm like, okay, you guys are involved, you know, because we feel so separated sometimes. Like we're in the office, they're out in the field. Some of them, I don't see them like ever, you know, because of where we're at. Right. So I, that's what I enjoy the most is seeing more people from the field attend these events, um, however you want to put them. Or sometimes when we have like our monthly meetings, I see new faces. I'm like, oh, okay. You know? <laughs> 
So it's more than anything, it's just to, like I said, James, like put the word out there and hopefully more people pick up on it. Like, hey, you don't have to always donate money. You can donate your time, right? Totally. I think this is, it's not always in business. You see a win, win, win. And when I'm hearing you talk, it sounds like there's three wins here. There's a win because you're obviously supporting something in the community and pushing that forward, which is great. And then there's a win because you're bringing your team together and you're getting to see them interact. You get to see people maybe you don't always deal with. And then the third win, hopefully, is like you individually feeling like, man, we did something good as a company as an individual and then for the community. So it's not always in business. You get a win, win, win. And the fact that you guys have been able to harness and create that, like you said, you've been in the industry forever, but you guys are only six, seven years into this as a company to already have that set in place. I think is awesome. Two last questions for you, Carolina. And actually I, we're going to have to do a follow up like Carolina Alvarez episode (laughs) because there's just so much like industry knowledge we can pull from you. But the first question is, what advice would you give to maybe a a CEO listening to this show right now? Um, If they're thinking about getting involved in the community with their team, like, is there any words of encouragement or advice you could give them or, or things that maybe they should know on why they should do that? So I think number one, I would definitely start small. Don't get overwhelmed because then you overwhelm everybody else. So you may think, oh, this is easy, no problem, we can get this done, but um, we don't have the same mentality everyone else does, and they're not as eager as we may be, right? So I think the first one, maybe something that's dear to your heart that you find, like, you know, maybe it's cancer awareness, maybe is uh, feeding the homeless, whatever it is, something that's dear to you. I would definitely start there. So because when you speak from the heart, you get more people excited to be part of that. And I think that once you get that what that first one going, people will see it and they'll be like, OK, yeah, this is great. I feel great about doing this and helping the community or helping the cause. Right. And then you can start slowly maybe adding or, you know, building on to that. But there's a lot of companies that just stick to one. So you don't need to do many. You can do one, you can do two, maybe do a 5K. I don't know. Along those lines, I would nice. say. I think that's I think that's great advice. You know, just start and start small and then see where it goes, right? And the next thing you know, you're going to be like JNS and have a committee and doing something every month. I think that's, <laughs> I think that's amazing. Second question here and the last question for you here, Carolina, is one, I was super excited to see that you guys registered for our event um because i know the type of leader you are and that's who we want to attract in those rooms and seeing jns come across the registration was awesome what made you commit to our event and uh yeah just talk to us about your experience at the event i'm just i haven't had the chance to talk to you one-on-one so i guess i'm i'm doing this publicly on record so be nice i'm just kidding be honest be honest (laughs) Well, okay. Well, first of all, I I think I've told you this in the past. When we first uh, talked on the phone, uh, you and myself, and then with Angel, was that I always said, you guys have something here. And I 100% support that because I do believe you have something and you're obviously building on it. And I've seen you guys grow, right? Uh, And so it's like, you know, I support people that are very behind their idea and what how it can help others. So I'm always going to support you and Angel. Thank you. And so it's like, you know what? Like, let's let's check it out. Let's see what's out there. It's, it's always nice to see um, how are other people, you know, we're, we're in, as an owner, sometimes you're kind of like alone in the corner and there's a lot of issues that, um, you know, A, you can't really be sharing with everybody else. And so I wanted to see a lot of that. I wanted to see how are other owners or CEOs or executives in other companies like mine dealing maybe with the same issues that I'm dealing. And maybe they have a way of addressing that that I haven't looked at yet. So that was my idea going into it. And I had no idea that you guys were going to have like Coach Burt and this and that going on. So that was the extra like cherry on top. 
you know? So that was great. I loved awesome. it. Awesome. Awesome. No, it was, it was super cool to see everyone there interacting and the community was built. I will tell you though, now you have to come back next year because now you have to win. <laughs> you have to either win this ward or another one for a second straight year in a row, but Carolina and then obviously JNS winners of the, the giver award, because you guys have such a servant attitude. And I mean, the proof is there. You guys have a committee based around giving back. So Caroline, I can't thank you enough for your friendship and for everything that you do uh, within the industry. And there's going to have to be like a second real episode, not saying this isn't a real episode, but like, like one that's industry specific. So thank you, Carolina. If you guys are curious on how you can learn more about JNS and Carolina, we'll link the LinkedIn profile and the website below. So thank you very much. And uh, we will talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you, James. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Angel. I know he's not here, but thank you. I look forward to the awesome. next event. We'll talk to you here soon.